It is now time for members' statements. The member from Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, just this week, we saw people down here at Queen's Park celebrating Nowruz, the holiday which means New Day, and it commemorates the Persian New Year. Well, we've got another Persian holiday today, and it's the Jewish holiday of Purim. It's considered one of the most joyous days in the Hebrew calendar, and it celebrates the survival of the Jewish people against an anti-Semitic villain once again. This time, his name was Haman. In the year 369 BCE, King Ahasuerus of Persia ascended the throne in what is now Iran. The villain of the story, Haman, was the arrogant, egotistical advisor to the king. Haman hated a Jew named Mordechai, who refused to bow down to him, so Haman plotted to destroy the Jewish people. The king gave the fate of the Jewish people to Haman to do as he pleased, so Haman planned just to exterminate all the Jews. The word Purim means lots and refers to a lottery system that Haman used to choose the date for the massacre. The story of Purim is told in the biblical book of Esther, and the heroes of the story are Esther, a beautiful young Jewish woman living in Persia, and her cousin Mordechai. Basically, Esther was taken into the harem, and the king chose her to be his queen. She managed to convince the king not to exterminate the Jews, so instead he decided to exterminate Haman and his family. Of course, now we eat cookies in the shape of Haman's hats. It's called Hamantashen, a triangular shape, and one of the mitzvahs, the de good deeds, is to get drunk, uh, so to the point that you can't tell the difference between Mordechai and Haman. Now, some people interpret that to mean drunk on happiness, but uh, many do not. So everybody stay safe, don't drink and drive tonight, and remember, the right checks are out there around the synagogues, believe it or not. So be careful, be safe, and happy Easter to everybody else this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Learn something new every day. The member from the member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Well, I'm proud to say that after $30 in fees and waits of uh, months of waiting, I finally received the report that is supposed to uh, tell me why the OPP helicopter has been moved from Sudbury Airport to Aurelia. Well. The only thing in that 30-page report that talks about this, listen to the speaker, it's because there's more people in Southern Ontario than in Northern Ontario, therefore all of the resources should be in, in Southern Ontario. According to them, we should not have a university or a hospital or a cancer treatment centre because you know what, speaker, there's less people in Northern Ontario than in Southern Ontario. This is the only rationale they could put forward. A lot of people have said moving both helicopters to Aurelia is dangerous because of the bad weather effect. Well, they, they actually, in the report, looked at the weather stations from um, Borden and from Muskoka. Both of them are more than 40 kilometers away, as opposed to the Aurelia base. This is right beside the lake, gets lake to fat, and is in a snow belt and is often grounded. People of the North are not taking this speaker. I have been copied on resolution from Charlton Dock, from the um, Association of Municipality of Manitoulin, the City of Greater Sudbury, the Town of Horn Payne, La Ville de Matisse, Val Cote, the Township of Billings. They're all telling the minister the same thing. Bring the helicopter back to uh, Sudbury Airport to, pro to protect the lives of Northerners. Thank you, speaker. Thank you. From the member, statement, the member from Mississauga, Arendelle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In November 2011, the Clyde Valley Hospital, the Mississauga Hospital, and the Coons Bay Health Center came together to form a new entity known as Trillium Health Partners. Mr. Speaker, four years in, the mergers is delivering positive results for patients. Through partnership, working in a coordinated way across the system has helped to meet the needs of the patients and provide outstanding sustainable quality patient care. Each location focuses on the patient care they specialize in. Mr. Speaker, Trillium Health Partner is now managed by one management team, ably led by the President and CEO, Michelle Demanuel, and is fully committed to improving patient care and delivering cost-effective solutions. Some of the key benefits of this mergers has been, Mr. Speaker, the centralized registration center has made registration faster and easier for patients. There has been a 28 percent improvement in emergency department wait times for admitted patients as a result of managing patient flow across the hospital as opposed to individual sites. This is also helping patients who urgently need beds to get them quicker. 
There has been a 20 percent decrease in bed times for cancer, cancer, cataract, hip, and knee surgeries, as well as for CT and MRI scan. Mr. Speaker, as emerged hospital, Trillium Health Partners has turned out to be one of the most efficiently run hospitals in the province. Mr. Speaker, this model has proved to be very effective in Mississauga and maybe needs to be explored in other regions of the province. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I stand in the House today to welcome Epilepsy Ontario yeah. and to announce Purple Day. Yeah. Today, MPPs are wearing purple ribbons to promote epilepsy awareness in honour of Purple Day, which falls on March 26. Founded in 2008, Purple Day was created to get people talking about the disorder and to help fight the stigma attached to seizures disorders by educating the public and empowering the epilepsy community. Epilepsy Ontario is the voice of epilepsy across the province. Since 1956, the organization has been raising public awareness and improving education across the province through publications, conferences, outreach initiatives, and of course its website. Thank you to Epilepsy Ontario for the great work that you do across the province to improve the lives of people living with epilepsy. Epilepsy is a common brain disorder characterized by recurrent seizures. Today, approximately 90,000 in Ontario have epilepsy. There remains no cure for this complex neurological disorder. However, proper treatment can help control seizures, assisting the person to live their life to the fullest. Given that Saturday is Purple Day, I encourage people to visit the Epilepsy Ontario website to learn more about this disorder and how to help someone having a seizure. Additionally, stigma is one barrier that people with epilepsy face and advocacy is an equally important tool for improving pe people's lives. Spread awareness. Educate yourself, educate others, and eliminate the misconceptions related to epilepsy. Together, we can make a difference for many lives throughout this yeah. province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Essex. Thank you much, uh, very much, Speaker. I, unfortunately, I rise again today to uh, bring awareness to a situation that continues to uh, evolve in uh, rural Ontario across the province. Uh, it's the closure of small rural and remote schools. Uh, constituents in my riding of Essex, and, and particularly, uh, specifically Harrow, uh, continue to fight the closure of uh, the Harrow High School there, uh, a school that's been a, a hallmark of that community. Uh, generations of families have sent their kids there, and it, and it continues to be a hub of uh, community spirit and, uh, of course, educational uh, resources for the kids that attend that school. However, uh, the provincial government uh, continues on their path to uh, destroying rural schools in Ontario. Uh, I've met with the parents, I've met with students and alumni who continue to collect signatures to fight the, the, the provincial government on their, on their efforts. However, uh, today the government announced that life would once again get harder for parents and families in rural Ontario. The Grants for Student Needs funding announced today includes deep cuts to geographic circumstances grant, uh, a lifeline uh, for rural schools in my community, and I imagine rural schools around the province of Ontario. This is a, a continual, uh, continuous dismantling of rural education in the province of Ontario. You are breaking apart uh, communities. You're forcing kids to go to schools and to travel long distances to go to schools that are outside of their, their home communities, and, and again, affecting the, the livelihood of small rural Ontario. I hope the government uh, changes their direction because it's affecting our communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker, and today it gives me great pleasure to rise to speak about Greek Independence Day. Uh, today, the Greeks all across Ontario and indeed the world over are celebrating the 195th anniversary of Greek independence. It's the day that the Greeks said no to the Ottoman Empire. And so today, Speaker, I had the privilege to join you, the Premier, Consul General-elect Alexandros Ioannidis, who I see is in the crowd, and welcome to Queen's Park, and uh, the Greek community of Toronto to commemorate Greek Independence Day. And I look forward to seeing everyone again very soon at the Danforth Parade. So Ontario is home to about 140,000 people of Greek descent, and so this is a momentous occasion to come together as Ontarians and honour what Greece has given the world, but also to honour the significant contributions across all fields that the Greek community has provided right here in the province. Toronto, including my riding of Beaches East York, is home to one of the most vibrant Greek communities outside of Greece, and I look forward to working with the community and enhancing our productive relationships. In 1982, Speaker, I bought my first home in Greek town in the 
Danforth and developed excellent relations with the community at that time, including resurrecting and saving their wonderful delicacy known as Kokoretsi. So, Speaker, on this day, as we come together to celebrate 195 years of Greek independence, we give our thanks to everything the Hellenic community in Ontario has given our province. Zito e alas. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Sarnia last to take Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've got to catch my wind. It was, it was flag raising. But Mr. Speaker, it's a pleasure uh, today to take the opportunity to recognize the presence of the Consul General of Greece, Alexandro Ionatis, and his wife, and other members of the Greek community of Toronto who are here today with us at Queen's Park. We just had a flag raising, and there's some more celebrations going on as well. On March 25th, members of the Greek community from around the world will celebrate Greece's National Day of Independence, which is observed both as a national and religious day of celebration for Greeks. It is a national day holiday commemorating Greece's War of Independence from centuries of Ottoman rule. The Greek revolt was precipitated on March 25, 1821, when Bishop Germanos raised the flag of revolution over the monastery of Eilu, Laval. The cry for freedom became the motto of the movement. It is also considered one of the holiest days for the Greek Orthodox Christians, celebrating, as it is, the, the Annunciation of the Theotokos. The Greek community here in Ontario has thrived for about 100 years or more, contributing immensely to the political, economic, and social fabric of our province, be it in business or in academia. The Greek community have always played an important role in shaping our province's civic and cultural institutions. Today, here at Queen's Park, we've had our Greek flag-raising ceremony. I would like to take this opportunity to invite all the members and visitors to the Greek Independence Day reception in room 20, 228 at 1.30 p.m. Mr. Speaker, using my best Greek possible, Zito Ayalas, Zito to Ontario, and Zito o Canada. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Every year, dietitians of Canada and thousands of dietitians working here in Ontario to help promote healthy eating through, through celebrating Nutrition Month in March. This year, Dietitians of Canada is challenging Canadians to take a 100-meal journey by pledging to make a small change to their eating habits and to stick with it one meal at a time. March 16 was marked as Dietitians Day to recognize the work of dietitians and, and the value they bring to the healthcare system right here in Ontario. By preventing and managing chronic diseases and promoting recovery, dietitians are a cost-effective investment in healthcare. Promoting access to dietitians' care and supporting them to work at full scope of practice helps achieve good health, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank the team of dietitians who met with me in my office for their education and passion, and I would like to congratulate everyone as we welcome to a close a very success successful Nutrition Month. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from York Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House today to remind everyone that March is Fraud Prevention Month. Throughout this month, the Ontario government and other organizations have been encouraging Ontarians to recognize, reject, and report fraud. Today, I'd like to highlight organized insurance fraud. It's a serious problem that impacts the cost of insurance for all consumers and is estimated to cost upwards of $1 billion in Ontario alone. Only a few people commit insurance fraud, but it costs everyone. One specific example I'd like to mention is an Aviva Canada investigation that has been recently covered in media reports on W5 and by Paul Bliss on CTV News. The coverage shows video footage of staff at a, both a healthcare clinic and a law firm encouraging and counseling undercover investigators to commit fraud. Mm. The responsibility of these professionals is to protect accident victim, victims, but instead they encourage the role players to lie so that they could submit phony forms and collect insurance payments for services never supplied. The Toronto Police has since laid charges on all these three professionals. Auto accident victims rely on health care providers to help them recover as well as restore their lives. Unfortunately, in instances like these, these innocent victims are targeted when they are most vulnerable and their pain and tragedies are manipulated. So this needs to stop, Mr. Speaker. Let's continue to work together to fight fraud. Thank you. Great job. 
I thank all members for their statements, and just as he's exiting, uh, I, I uh, speaker, have always uh, welcomed and thanked our Consul General Corps for being here, so I did want to bring attention to the Consul General of Greece and his boss, his wife, for being here and also our guests uh, today for the flag raising. So welcome to the Consul General and to our guests. I call members for their statements. It's now time for